to be or not to be, that is indeed the question. Mm. I just want to look at it. To be. Cool. Hi there everyone and welcome to today's little stream. Uh, it's not going to be a long stream, I've just got to get an idea down on paper. So today's idea is going to be using a graphite base pencil and this is one of those woodless ones. They are a little bit tricky to use depending on the softness. This one's a 2B or not 2B and I've got other types but I feel this one's going to be good for today and what I'm also going to use is the new paper I found and this one's pretty good. It's called Multi-Techniques Natural paint on now it is 250 weight which is pretty good and a really nice comfortable weight so i'm looking to get new layers and i got this in lime regis on one of my little waddles so there's one really nice little art shop in lime regis down in dorset and she does a range of gp art stuff and then the more posh art stuff and somehow she got her hands on a load of claire fontaine paper now I uh, don't know if you guys know anything about Claire Fontaine. It's good stuff. Seriously, good stuff. Now, the original price was £4.40. And I got mine for £3.75. Bargain. I would have got some bigger sizes, but she only had them in this size. So, that's all I can get. That's what I'm going to use. Uh, so, it is a tan paper. But it's not as tan as uh, the Strathmore tan. Um, do I have a tampo? Dives into drawer. Um, now, I did also get a grey one, and just quick to show you that's the grey, and that's a really nice, rich, dark grey. It feels a bit more textured as well. Uh, there's only 30 sheets on one of these pads, so for me, this is a case of use it wisely. So, when I said about the other paper, Oh my god, it's gonna, it's gonna hide, isn't it? Um, that's the Strathmore. Really wobbly, um, and it is a different paper. Now, this Strathmore is meant to be A5, and the Claire Fontaine is meant to be A5, but there's like a centimetre difference in length. So, sorry, I've got a hair hanging on. My hair behave. Um, <laughs> so, there is a difference in the colour, there's a difference in the texture and the weight. The Strathmore, I think, is normally only... What's the Strathmore? Strathmore is normally... God, I don't know if I make this hard to read. £80. So, 80 versus 150 Sorry, £115 in pounds. So, Strathmore's 80 Claire Fontaine stuff is 115 So, there's going to be a nice difference. With the Strathmore, I'm really limited to how much layers I can get, but which is a real shame because it's quite a nice paper. And um, before, a couple of months ago, I did this little drawing of a swine nub in a mushroom patch. And that's what I want to continue on, but in a different way. Uh, mushrooms is a theme, you could say. So I've got my paper, and for this, I'm going to take it off of the pad because if I push too hard by accident, I don't want the embossed bit to push through onto the next page. Try not to you want to talk here. And my glass mat is clean enough. So, a little bit, it feels textured. Mm, textured. I love my paper, can't help it, it's good stuff. And because I'm not near to any decent art shops, finding something of quality is like, well, Christmas. It's brilliant. Now, I'm going to move that pot of ink um, somewhere where my elbow is not going to meet it, which is, I could put it on the wall, my elbow will still manage to find it. I'm having one of those days today. Right, so, with these pencils, uh, these solid lead ones, or graphite stuff, they don't sharpen to a sharp, sharp point often without problems. So I'm just rummaging around in one of my pouches. 
because I should have a certain German sharp name in there. There it is. I have different sharpeners for different pencils. Um, I've got about 20, 30 sharpeners. And you can't apply much pressure to these without them snapping. So that's probably about as sharp as I'm going to get it. That can go back in my pouch. I'm going to work today, so <laughs> this is literally before work. So the concept that I've got is mushrooms. Hmm. Well, let's try this out. There are at least five little Pokemon that I want to put in this image. But because of the size of the paper, I've got to take that into consideration. It's how much detail can I get without flooding the image? Hmm. Can I have one, one there? I kind of want this one. So my rough layout is going to be really rough. I don't know, first time using this paper, so I'm trying to keep my hand really light, and that's why I'm using the soft pencil. I want to be able to see the lines, but I don't want them to be too strong. happy with that this is my biggest problem is that I always go straight straight in I know what I want I want to put it on paper that's what I do but I definitely recommend experimenting and seeing what creations you can find so reference material always 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 handy to have a reference book especially when you can't remember the names right, that's gonna be the one at the back a, B, C, D, e, G, I can't remember where it is. Where it is. Right. Luckily, this book is actually quite um, heavy. So, sorry if there's a bit of light bouncing around. I am trying to keep the lights controlled. Now, I might try and do this without outlines, which is a little bit more tricky for me because I'm too used to outlines. So the first thing you need is a really nice sharp pencil. In this case, uh, you could use Prismacolors, the rip-off of Prismacolors. I don't know how well Crayolas would do this because you want layers, but you want uh, still to keep the vibrance of the colours. I'm going to use Polychromos Prismacolors and these really darn expensive luminous ones. Okay. Time to add in the detail. Oh, what's that look like? Um, and just to give you an idea, hopefully you can see that is literally all I'm working on. If you can see that. Oh yeah, I so. um, And for those people watching this camera, if you can see the detail, congrats. <laughs> so my, my computer's over there, the camera's over here, the other camera's here, the light's over there, and I'm here. Oh, and the drawing's down here. So, um, so all my layers, the first layers, I'm going to keep really, really light. Um, because this drawing is going to have three elements of foreground, midground, background, I've got to take into consideration the overlap. And I think there's going to be quite a lot of it. And the Prismacolor uh, feels very, very soft on this paper I am liking. I've never actually drawn these ones before so this is a completely alien experience. But I'm not going to copy directly directly from the book. 
I'm going to make some modifications so that it suits more of what I'm aiming for. in front of book okay yeah you learn the shapes and stuff but you don't learn how to move, make the kind of character move and such so you do lose out if you just copy um, nice thing with uh, a lot of color pen having a lot of color pencils hand it does make it easier to get color matches To make sure the shape slip 3D, I'm just going to make sure that my curves are in the right places. This guy's going to have a few more markings than the others. So this is like a base layer of colour going down. Nice and light. At least this is real time so you can get an idea of the speed that I'm going at. I would say the colours that I'm using but if you guys are going to do a drawing you need to interpret the drawing yourself and pick up what colours you feel match the image best. I can tell you that I'm using a pale vermilion but if you haven't got a pale vermilion you're gonna have to find a, a match so match it by eye and see what you can find i'm gonna try and not use black too much um to rep if you haven't got a black pencil use a blue a red and a brown and just layer very gently up and up and up and that should give you really nice dark tones So that's that guy. And then I need the other one to come over here. Hmm. Okay, I'll do that colour. So I'm not following the lines that I've originally put down fully because I'm just looking at the sizes and I'm thinking, oh, I can change that. that one roughed in. I'll stop markers in the pages so I know where I need to go so I'm not completely diving all over the place. I want a big one, I want a fat one.
and use a ruler to weigh down that page. Ew, purples, colours that I don't normally use. Ew. Oh, so it's got it's no pure white, there are some little green spots in there. Yeah, we'll uh, play with that later. And then Molarello. So some of the names for Pokemon are a bit too obvious. It's not white, that's cream. These colours aren't going to be an exact match. I'm just mapping out quite literally the where the bits go, and then I can come back and work on the direct colours. Once again, isn't going to be a white one. Nice thing about these is that the a lot of the colours are roughly the same. but it's going to be getting the middle characters position right so I've got to rotate the image slightly it's going to be this is the good thing about having a light image is 
that I should be able to overlay any layers that I'm having trouble with. One, two, three, and then a center. Sorry about my arm, it's gonna be in the way for a few minutes just while I just work out my positioning here. Right, so that's my rough uh, little lineup. Just checking a couple of things. Yep, we're still going. So we've got the one, two, three, four, five mushroom Pokemon and one little piggy Pokemon. The idea behind this is that the little swine up has gone happily through the forest hunting his mushrooms, nummy nom noms, and kind of. In the end, picked the wrong mushrooms. Um, inspired by a radio uh, program thing today where a chap was talking about foraging and they were saying about the fact that they went out and got a load of what they thought were normal edible mushrooms. Turned out one of the mushrooms was, wasn't edible and everyone ended up pretty ill. Uh, so it's kind of a take on what I got from the radio uh, this morning. Yeah, radio does still exist, people. So that's where I've picked up my inspiration from. My love of Pokemon and a radio chat show about mushrooms and how not to pick them. So pencil shot I needed. When I've said in the past about trying to find, if you're looking for inspiration and where to find it, inspiration can literally turn up anywhere. Seriously. So colour wise, now I need to start uh, colour matching. That's going to be a little bit more tricky. So I need a greyish brown and a dark brown. And he's got a pink nose. So I'll bring in my putty rubber. Let's see if I can erase any of this off the paper without damaging the paper. Just gently lifting. Just doing a time check. Yeah. Not bad. I don't want to push any harder though than that. So for this I'm going to use a small circular motion. And just keep it really light. I don't know how this paper is going to react to having layers. It still feels really nice and smooth. I wouldn't probably bring in uh, odorless thinners and things like that onto this sort of paper uh, in case it stains it. But if I get some more cheap, then I might do some experimenting. And I'm soon probably see I'm actually mixing the pencils, so from oil to wax or oil to wax. Doesn't always work, but I'm willing to give it a go.
like that. The layers seem to feel really nice and soft when going down, so that's always good. I'm not too worried if my lines are a bit too dark in places because I can always incorporate these into the shadows. At least that's the plan. I've still got leaves to put in as well. Sorry if I keep my stuff over there, it's just to check that everything's working. I don't quite trust my computer. So then I need another slightly darker colour. So that is, let's see. This one, yeah. This is the burnt umber, so this is pretty dark. So I'm still keeping quite a light hand on the pressure, just building up those layers. Now, I'm gonna do this little guy next. Hmm. This is a prisma colour which has been playing up a bit, hence the woods all shattered. It's going to play up even more. Um, these guys I'm not too sure on how to draw, so. It's meant to look like a Pokemon ball, isn't it? Just have an idea. Right, um, right, that is <laughs> guaranteed to go flying across the room. Right, um, bear with me. 
Uh, this is the Tombow Muller eraser. And yes, I'm wiping it on my arm to clean it off. On my hand. I've also been able to lift Faber Castells with a Tombow Mono Razor. Just do it very gently. This little idea. On the little swan nubs, you don't really see them out, do you? Except when they yawn and such. But uh, this guy or girl. And lighter colour. I've got that little tongue sticking out. It becomes more relevant to the scenario. So I'm going to push that back a little bit. How do I get this to look like a tongue sticking out and not just a strange face? Well, I've mapped it in. I'll come back and play with that in a minute. So the idea is sometimes just literally smack you in the nose. I need to trim that bit back. It's a bit too much rubber there. Because I want a little bit of an overlay between the characters. Show the relation. a couple of leaves in here see I'm developing the image as I go I'm suddenly just thinking need that need that need that and it's just building it up so for the black parts I'm actually going to use a blue pen to map them out first so that I can just get comfortable with where I'm putting what or what I'm putting where and then I can come back through and darken those up so I don't have one over the back it's just around the half And the little podgy nose that they have. Right. So now I'm happy with that. I think. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Time to layer that up. Cream. So for the white, I'm just doing a very light layer of cream. And then I'll come back through with the white and sharpen that up a bit. And by the way, thank you for everyone who's popped over today. It is appreciated. Do love you guys. And if it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't uh, be trying to improve and learn things. Well, and if anything I do can help anyone, then all the better. And just gently adding another layer. I don't know how white I'm going to be able to get the white on this paper. Because it's lighter than the um, Strathmore, it's probably going to be less obvious. But I'm going to try. And that's where layers, greys, blues and things like that are going to come in. I don't know which I do 
guy. Oh, where's the one? There we go. There's a guy. Just indicate a little bit of light shadow behind. So I can come back through with the white and just overlay. And start building up that red. You'll notice quite often I take a step back from drawing and then relook. It's just so that I can see it with a fresh perspective. And um, that way my eyes don't get tired either. So I'm bringing in a bit of a brighter red. Mm, it's that really damaged one. <laughs> I probably should have taped this piece of paper down to the glass, but hi ho. I prefer to rotate my drawings anyway as I go. And I'm bringing in a uh, lightest orange just to add some colour variants. Also, to just uh, make some areas a little bit more bold. There is texture on this paper, but it's not as textured as some watercolours. So I do have a little bit of kind of white patches, but I'm getting those covered layer by layer. And use the cream to soften up those greys. Yes, little swine nub. No, he, I think it's picked on the wrong mushroom. So I need. I think I'm going to have to use a black. Try, try bluish grey first. Some of these areas I don't mind if they're like a really soft look. Of areas I do want a bit sharper. Actually, you know what? That might do it. So I, said, I don't really want to use black if I can help it. I use a brown over here just to put in that shadow. Also, you have a sharpener. One of my sharpeners doesn't work on the luminance pencils. Don't know why. Well. I do know why, but um, what I find is the sharpness where they've got the curve, well, not the curve, the angle to them, they work better with chunkier pencils. We just got to experiment and find out. I 
I'm putting a little bit more pressure on here. So that's a tiny little bit done ish. I'll come back to that, rework it, come back, rework. So I'm going to move on to one of the main characters. I just find my reference photo, reference image, um, pp pp pp. Okay. These things look creepy. So I'm just time checking. Right, probably about another 15 minutes I can spend on this, and I'm gonna have to go. Alas, poor Yurik. But I hopefully should be back this afternoon. Well, this evening, after Dindins. So I've mapped in the eyes. Prisma colours do lay down the colour really well on these. Let's bring in a little bit of brown just to add some tones and a kind of russety red colour. Then I'll go back over that with the oranges. pop out a little bit more. Typical Prisma colour, it's gone and broken. Am I surprised? Nope. this colour down. Come on pencil. <laughs> colour as a filler that should do it.
ruhig schlafen. Na, this one's broken as well. Prisma colors. <laughs> I've had mine there for 30 years and they just break, break, break. So I've gone over to Faber, um, yeah, Faber Castell and the Luminance. Red is a nightmare colour because it doesn't erase well. case of layers, layers, more layers. Right, so for now I'm going to stop there because I've got to get ready to go to work and then hopefully this afternoon I'll come back and start up again. But I hope this has given you some ideas for some inspiration. Uh, radio woohoo who would have thought the chat about mushrooms inspired me to do a drawing about mushrooms but uh with my favorite thing pokemon so hopefully catch you guys later and if you like this video stay tuned hopefully <laughs> i'll pop back feel free to subscribe ding ding the bell whatnot and see you guys soon so take care all the best and happy drawing to you all <laughs>